So what we do there at the seaport in the morning, whatever ships come in, we share the terminals. We have nine terminals at the seaport. We are the largest uh, seaport in the United States. So we're very high on security. We are very diligent when it comes to anything we see that's out of place. We have a very good working team of officers that will point out those unattended vehicles, or it could be an unattended bag. And again, most of the unattended luggages and backpacks and things of sort is because people are just so excited to get on the ship. They come right out of the taxi cab or the Uber, throw their stuff down, think they picked everything up, and that's usually what it is. So what we do is in the morning, we share however many terminals are going to be active that day and we do a sweep of the perimeter and we just make sure that nothing is out of place. There's no vehicles that shouldn't be there. There's no packages. Uh, there's no unusual looking things that could be in, inside of a garbage can or inside of the plants themselves or anything that is out of place is what we're searching for. And that's, that's how our day usually goes. Once we finish the sweeps, then we catch up on paperwork like anybody does. We might throw a training aid out so that we all have something, you know, that our dog does get, you know, their toy because it's the only time they get their toys when they find, you know, something, you know, with training. Um, and we just go from terminal to terminal and do our little walk and talk and make sure everything's good. And each terminal, because the boats get bigger and bigger and bigger, one of our large, one of the largest ships in the world, uh, we host at the Port of Miami, which is the icon of the seas. It carries anywhere between 7,600 to 7,700 passengers, and that does not include crew members or workers on the ship. Then you're looking at almost 9,000 and change, and that's at one terminal. Lots of people, and inevitably, if there's four or five ships that come in. If that's seven and the others are between five and six thousand, that's a good thirty thousand coming in and coming out at the same time sometimes, which is lots of traffic. But nonetheless, that's about sixty thousand passengers at any given moment. It's almost like a like our football stadium. Our football stadium holds sixty some odd thousand, so that that's roughly how many people are moving around that two mile island. So at the seaport, there's five of us, including the sergeant, and we all have explosive dogs. They're all, they're all bomb dogs. They're all bomb search dogs. He has a different specialty. He, I've had him for eight years now. He does is he's able to track a suicide bomber should that day ever come. So again, he has to be a very good people person. He is not aggressive. He's actually a very, very good dog. And we walk through the crowds at the port. We have conversations. Um, little kids take pictures with him. You know, he's just overall just a really, really good, very, very good social dog. Um, we also work the concerts at uh, our big stadium here called Hard Rock Stadium. We work the football games. And again, it's that same interaction. Just walk amongst the crowd. Um, usually one of the uh, SWAT guys uh, usually backs me up just as a backup in case we have to um, do anything with that individual that my dog shows some type of interest in. But again, very good social. You have to be very good socially with uh, with people when you interact with him because he he's a beautiful German Shepherd, but he looks like a wolf. I was able to do all the things I wanted and. Even when we go back to when I put in for a negotiator back in 2022, no, 2002. So I've been a negotiator for 22 years. Again, it says if the funeral home kind of shaped me as even in this career, because I was still longing for that person that I wanted that family to, to have see first in crisis. And that's exactly what happens in a negotiator scenario when you have a barricaded subject. So I kind of followed that path. Um, I always thought about being a canine officer. I've, I'm an 
a big animal lover. So I um, started that path of putting in for the different units of canine throughout the department. And I was able to get um, at the seaport, which is where I'm at now. I've been there for 19 years now, the seaport office. And that's, I think I'm living the dream. It's the best partner anybody could ask for. Then I did honor guard for a little while. And that again, that brought me right back to paying respect um, to those that um, were killed on the line of duty, um, who paid the ultimate sacrifice. So again, that brought me back. And then I'm part of the um, peer support through our Psychological Wellness Bureau. And again, it's ministering to officers in crisis. So I still you know, go right back to what molded me before.